Boom shakalaka, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters around the world. It is your boy, Chris Shule, a.k.a. the esoteric noetic, a.k.a. the chocolate Nubian soul brother from Ghana, West Africa. Dropping the wisdomatic truth bombs here in Melbourne, Australia. Be sure to like the video, subscribe, click on the bell, tell your friends, tell your mom, drop us some comments, let us know what it is. Thank you for everyone that has been doing so. Let's get it. Ladies and gentlemen, everyone is talking about Novak Dokovic. Remember the name, because that name is going to go down in the history books as being of infinite importance. Novak Dokovic just became my favorite athlete. He's transcended the realm of being an athlete into the realm of being a hero after recent events. I mean, this guy is standing on the river of truth, planting himself like a tree and saying no to tyranny. He's doing something that very few athletes seem to be doing right now, standing for what they believe in, transcending their sport, putting everything on the line. This guy is arguably one of the greatest tennis players, if not the greatest, that has ever lived. And he's putting all of this on the line to stand for something he believes in. Now, that to me is the sign of a great man. It's the same kind of thing we saw Muhammad Ali doing in his career, transcending the realm of boxing into the realm of a hero, a legend, because he stood for something. I mean, back then, people would frown on those that decided not to go to the Vietnam War and fight. In fact, I was speaking to someone just, uh, just on New Year's Day that told me that uh, his brother was rejected by their father because his brother refused to go to Vietnam and fight and kill people on ethical grounds. And his father thought that was a cowardice thing to do because the mentality of the time was that yeah, it's all right for the government to kidnap you and take you to another country to kill people. That was the norm. But of course, some people decided to transcend the moral certitudes of their time. And this is exactly what Muhammad Ali did. He knew that it was wrong. Muhammad Ali was not a follower. He was not someone that did, that did things just because it was what everyone else was doing. And in similar fashion, this is exactly what Dokovic is doing. He has made a stand against what is going on. And I'm telling you, it has divided a lot of people. A lot of people in the Australian community uh, are not happy with the idea that this guy's getting into the country. And then others, like myself, are championing what he is doing. And in recent events, this guy has been approved to stay in Australia. So recently, Dokovic had his visa suspended and was detained in Australia under the, uh, the immigration uh, agenda. Now, after going to court, the Federal Circuit Court Judge Anthony Kelly ordered the immediate release of the defending Australian champion Dokovic from immigration detention just after uh, quashing the government's decision to cancel his visa because he was on Boom Shakalakit, which is incredible news. Uh, according to Dokovic's barrister, Nicholas Wood, Dokovic has done everything in his power to meet all the requirements. He provided a medical exemption at border uh, security. He showed all of the evidence. And he actually asked, like, what more could he have done? Which is very damning to the government because essentially Dokovic has done everything he could to submit to their requirements, but they've still decided to restrict him from entering the country, showing that the government is acting fraudulently. So Australia is in a real difficult place right now. They have the option of either looking like a, a, a fraudulent country, which they obviously are, or looking like the most tyrannical country that decides to bar world-class athletes from coming in unless, of course, they submit themselves to an experimental boom shakalaka. And what's even crazier right now is that even though uh, the federal court judge Anthony Kelly ruled that he can, he can stay here, he can play. The crazy thing is uh, the Commonwealth, Alex Hawke, this Momo has the ability to still suspend his visa and kick him out and is actually still deciding on this. Over the next few days, uh, he could play the, uh, oh, we're still kicking you out, out card. Yeah, no, mate, look, um, sorry, mate, but we, we just don't want you in here. And what, what's even crazier about this whole thing is one of the medical officials made the argument that just because you have a medical exemption and you have natural, natural immunity, you caught this thing, right? It doesn't mean that you don't need to get boom shakalaka to come into Australia, mate. 
Like we're actually having this conversation now as to whether or not natural immunity is sufficient enough, which a few years back would have been a completely ridiculous conversation. But the fact that we are in this, this uh, politric envi environment, politics, ladies and gentlemen, this is about deception. We're now making the argument that it's not enough to have natural immunity. And if you have a look at a conversation that took place in Congress in the United States where uh, Rand Paul was discussing this very issue, it is so transparent what is going on. Check this out. Are you familiar with an Israeli study that had uh, 2.5 million patients and found that the vaccinated group was actually seven times more likely to get infected with COVID than the people who had gotten COVID naturally? Senator, I'd have to get back to you on that one. I'm not familiar with that study. Well, you think you might want to be if you're going to travel the country insulting the uh, millions of Americans, including NBA star Jonathan Isaac, who have had COVID, recovered, look at a study with 2.5 million people and say, well, you know what? It looks like my immunity is as good as a vaccine or not. And in a free country, maybe I ought to be able to make that decision. Instead, you've chosen to travel the country calling people like Jonathan Isaac and others, myself included, flat earthers. We find that very insulting, goes against the science. Are you a doctor or a medical doctor? I have worked uh, over 30 um, years on health so policy. You're, you're not a medical doctor. Do you have a science degree? And yet you travel the country calling people flat earthers who have had COVID, looked at studies of millions of people, and made their own personal decision that their immunity they naturally acquired is sufficient. But you presume somehow to tell over 100 million Americans who have survived COVID that we have no right to determine our own medical care. You alone are on high and you've made these decisions, a lawyer with no scientific background, no medical degree. This is an arrogance coupled with an authoritarianism that is unseemly and un-American. You, sir, are the one ignoring the science. The vast preponderance of scientific studies, dozens and dozens show robust long-lasting immunity after COVID infection. Even the CDC does not recommend measles vaccine if you have measles immunity. The same was true for smallpox. But you ignore history and science to shame the flat earthers, as you call them. You should be ashamed of yourself and apologize to the American people for being dishonest about naturally acquired immunity. There's been mixed reaction in the world in regards to what's going on with Djokovic. New York Times reported recently that the Australian border force did what sports bodies are failing to do. Say no. If athletes don't like restrictions imposed on the unboomshakalucked, they could just get a shot like millions of other people. A privilege that millions more are still waiting for. Oh, really? Just get the boomshakalucker. Don't care about keeping your body as a temple. Don't care about how that might affect you. Or just do it because everyone else is doing it. How about I have a right to choose what I put in my body? And what's even crazier is, is it's one thing. I mean, I don't get me wrong. I think this is twisted either way. It's one thing for a government to not allow people to enter their country, right? I, I don't believe in, in any closed borders, ladies and gentlemen. I believe in private property borders. But I do not believe in any government organization, any nation for that matter. They're all imaginary lines saying that one person can't move into this area of land, you know, unless, of course, it is it is a private property of someone. But they're actually restricting people all around the world from coming into countries. And granted, they've been doing this for years. I understand. But this is what we're doing. But not only are we doing that, now we're not allowing citizens to actually leave their country like in Australia. You, you can't actually leave this place unless, of course, you submit yourself to rape. That's what is going on in Australia, mate, in the 21st century. This thing is an absolute joke. And the world right now is looking at Australia. We may be threatening the reputation. In fact, we, we've done tr tremendous reputation to Australia already. But the, t the reputation of Tennis Australia has, has already gone into the garbage. And if Australia, if... The Commonwealth, Alex Hawke decides to revoke Dokovic's visa status. It is going to have some serious repercussions. I mean, one, Dokovic is not going to be allowed into the country for three years to play. And I'm sure this is going to have a, a 
cascading effect on many other tennis players that will consider whether or not they even want to come to Australia. But I'll tell you what, provided Djokovic is able to play, everything is, is kosher, and he ends up playing in the Australian Open, I, for one, would not want to be facing him. I'm sure someone like Raphael, uh, Raphael Nadell is going to be thinking to himself, whoa, this, this guy is going to want this thing more than anything. And where is Dokovic is being very humble, diplomatic. He actually made a response to uh, the, the recent finding by the, the federal court judge, Anthony Kelly. And he seems as if he just wants to play. But I'm telling you, deep down, Dokovic has got to be feeling this, this sense of needing to make a point. Because he is standing for not only his, his legacy, but is actually making a stand for millions of people around the world. Billions of people right now, I would say, that actually are not in line with what is going on. He is actually representing more than just the face of tennis. And he is going to want to win this uh, this Grand Slam just to make a point. And I would not want to be facing him right now. Oh, Djokovic is an absolute legend. This guy is a champion. He is loved in Serbia. He is a national icon. He's an icon to many people. He's become my favorite sporting hero. He is not only highly conscious is making a stand, is against this tyranny, this violation of bioethics standards, but is also very conscious in terms of what is going on in, in the environment. He's into sustainability. He's into the plant-based lifestyle, like yours truly. This guy t donates a tremendous amount of money to charity. In fact, the hotel that he was staying at, uh, his foundation had, had already donated a lot of money to. And dis despite that, he was tr being treated quite poorly. Didn't get very good uh, living accommodation. But this guy is constantly involved in charity work all around Serbia and the world. So he is someone that a lot of people look up to. So there are a lot of people that are rallying behind Djokovic right now. And if this guy wins the Australian Open 2022, oh, it may be the one pivotal moment where the world looks at Australia and says, shame on you. And this, and Djokovic is really going to set the standard. Someone comes here, doesn't want to buy into this, this coercion, and goes on to win the Gansland. This is going to be, it's probably going to be the biggest news of 2022. But anyway, I don't want to jump the gun. We've had a lot of crazy things happen. I have a feeling that this is not going to be the... Uh, the highlight of the year. We're going to see a lot of crazy events. And if you stay tuned, subscribe, click on the bell, tell your mom, tell your friends, I'm going to keep you posted on all of this, on this journey, on this ride. i got a lot of big things coming your way, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I may be up for the same kind of Dukovic challenge over the next while, so uh, I'll keep you guys posted. Until next time, Surya Namaskara, Namaste. This is Chris Yule, the Chocolate Nubian Soul Brother, Oh, signing out. What is liberty? What the? Who says you can't build a muscle on a vegan diet? What's it like being a, a hottie in the vegan community? There are no political solutions, only technological ones. The economics of the system don't allow multiple competing systems to survive. Engineering, technology, these arts of humanity, they are magic.